software repair shop for major work. 11 restaurants and coffees, 12 studios, 13 other use which in the judgment of the commission as evident, evidenced by resolution in writing are similar to, sorry, that's too small. Oh, sorry about that. Those, uh, small yeah, so those uh, list uh, here in uh, 14 use uh, customarily accessory to any of the above list use, including only one of those accessories to manufacturing, storage, compounding, or processing activities which are necessary for the ordinary conduct of said list use and which are in integral party therefore of 15 accessory structures for the above. Mm, okay, small prints because too long the list. I have to make the small prints. Uh, some very interesting uh, uh, permitted uses for season. Uh, my first question is, can I build a single family home on season? Yes. Mm, the answer is yes. That make the change later on we'll talk about the setback uh, requirements. Number two, so what does um, mortuary mean? Mortuary, what does that mean? What's the difference between mortuaries and cemetery? Uh, that's a funeral home. Yeah, a funeral home, yes, mortuary. So mortuary is allowed for, is permitted for season. And then also, what does that mean? Automobile, but minor repair. Um, automobile service but minor what is what can be considered minor repairs yeah oil change change tires and then uh, maybe some uh, service like a, a, a wash car wash or uh, etc but what if you need some major change major repair so and then c zone is not qualified so you need to find another zone so that will be considered as minor change Okay, let's see P zone. P zone, uh, Jacqueline. Sure. Um, P, autom automobile parking zone permitted uses. Number one, public or commercial parking areas and garages. Number two, public access to adjoining parking areas. Number three, loading and unloading of automobiles or trucks, but not to preclude the use of portions of required parking spaces. Number four, mm -hmm. services, vehicle storage after commercial business hours. Five, utilities and public facilities. Six, accessory uses and structures for the, for the above. Mm, okay, thank you so much. P basically means parking, P for parking. And then uh, you can see basically, so it is for uh, the, the parking places, play, uh, parking spaces, and also for uh, loading and then the facilities for that. Okay, next one, main uh, M1. So this is also small print because this is a long list. Let me ask a student who has a good eyes. Mary Lou, can you see them? Uh, uh, a mute. Which one, Lee? Uh, all of them, one to 12. Okay. Can you see them? Okay, uh, yeah. Hmm. M1 light industrial zone permitted uses. Any use permitted with without condition in the commercial zone. Uh, number two, the manufacturing, compounding, processing, or treating or which products as drugs. I'm sorry, it's really, really small. Right. Uh, let, let's change another one. Maybe you're using iPhone. Okay. Who can see it? Please. Yeah. <laughs> who, who can see it? Okay, Bab, can you go through them? Where did we leave off? Sorry, number three. Uh, number three. Yeah. Okay, number three, the manufacturing, compound, assembling, or treating of articles or merchandise from previously prepared materials. Number four, automobile repair shops, including painting, body, and fender work, and rebuilding, um, truck and tractor repairing, and tire retreading. Number five, bottling and packaging plants. Number six, ceramic products manufacturing. Number seven, laundries and cleaning and dyeing establishments. Number eight, machine shops and sheet metal shops. Number nine, warehouses and cold storage plants. 10, lumber yards, building material 
seals yard, contractors equipment storage yards and the like. 11 other uses which in the judgment of the commission as evidenced by resolution and writing are similar to those listed herein and 12 use customarily accessory to any of the above listed and accessory buildings okay thank you so much okay so uh the most tricky one for m1 will be the term number one okay let's read that again any use permitted with or without condition in the commercial zone Okay, let me ask you a question. Can I build a single family home on M1? Yes. Uh, why yes? Because term one is telling us, what does term one mean? It means that M1 actually is the extended list for C zone. As long as C zone allows, permits, and then you are able to do it on M1 as well. To answer my question, actually you have to go back to C zone whether we can build a single family home, one family dwelling, you can see here. So yeah, the answer, the big answer is yes, we are able to build a single family home on M1. That makes M1 is more valuable than C zone because as long as C zone allowed and M1, uh, and, uh, M1 will allow, that makes the, the, the land more valuable. And then also here would be a warehouse. Can I build a warehouse on C-Zone? That's a tricky question. If a client wants to ask you, hey, I want to buy a land, and then my plan is I want to build a warehouse or some uh, mini storage. Right now is the trend. A lot of developers, so they, they want to um, do a mini storage. Have you ever heard about mini storage? Yes, right? Mini storage is uh, they, they have some containers and then to, they rent the space to the people to store something. So mini storage, if the, the client has this requirement, what zone can you sell to him or her? Can you, can you, can you, uh, can you introduce a C zone? Can C zone allow to build a warehouse? Let's check. Sheila is nodding the head, right? Let's see. I think so. Sheila, you have to check C zone. So C zone, can you build a warehouse? Uh -huh. like warehouse. We're using it for wholesale. Wholesale normally are house and warehouses. So uh -huh. I, I think it depends on what you're going to use it for. But what if you, you're just saying the warehouse, not the wholesale, the warehouse? Warehouse, warehouse will be M1. Yeah. Yeah, warehouse will be M1. So be careful. Don't only choose C zone. So if you're not sure, so that will be the question you have to confirm with uh, land management and DPW. Well, normally we would ask our client what the intent of the, of the land is for. Mm. And then you would, you know, there's always that disclaimer that, you know, the buyer will be there uh -huh. as far as uh, right. the use of the, of the land. Correct. Uh, uh, correct. So you, we always can shift the burden to others. That's really true. But for my perspective, we are the first, we, 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 need, we need to provide uh, some protection, uh, double protection for the buyer, because that's our job our uh, uh, real professional, we are professional real estate practitioner. So we're the first screen. We provide information to the client. Hey, this is the list of the uh, permitted uses. So are you going to reconsider whether you can do or cannot do? So at least according to this list, so the warehouse, uh, only M1 is permitted. So that's what I have known. So if you want to give it a shot, that's up to you. But here is what I recommend. M1 will be the best solution if you want to uh, want a warehouse. Okay, warehouse, that's the tricky one. Okay, let's see M2. Joanne, M2. Okay. Heavy industrial zone permitted uses. Number one, any uses permitted in the M1 zone except residential use. Number two, junkyards under the special provisions set forth in chapter 10 of Title 18 Government Code of Law. Number three, any other uses not specifically prohibited by law included those which are or may be objectionable, obnoxious or offensive by reason of odor, dust, smoke, noise, gas fumes, cinders, vibrations or water carried waste. Number four, 
uses customarily accessory to any of the uses here and permitted and accessory buildings and structures. Mm, okay, thanks so much, Joanne. So the tricky one for M2 will be the term number one. Let's see what does that mean? Any uses permitted in the M1 zone except residential use. Okay, let me ask you a question. Can I, um, can I build a restaurant and M2? Mm. See, that's a tricky question, right? Uh, yeah. Maybe no. Yes. Uh, yes. What do you think? Yes. How do yes. we understand the first term? That, that will be the, the important. How do we understand the permitted uses? It means that any use permitted in the M1 zone, it means M2 is the extended list about one. And M1 is the extended list of C zone. Okay, it means as long as C and M1 permit, and then it will be permitted for M2. So to answer my question, you have to go back to the previous two lists. And then we we'll go back to M1, and we we'll go back to C zone. Can you check whether restaurant is permitted for C zone? The answer is yes, right? Okay, therefore for M2, a general answer is yes, especially you might challenge or depending on the EPA or et cetera, right? But the general answer would be a big yes. Okay, so that will be the general answer. Okay, so another question, a tricky one. Can I build a single family home on M2? No, you cannot. Uh, the answer is a big no, uh, because here will be the exception, except residential use. That will be the only <laughs> Uh, we can build a residential on C zone and M1, but for M2, the answer is a general no. You are not able to build a residential use uh, unless you apply for a conditional use. That, uh, that will be not covered in this class. And then maybe you, you can talk to uh, Kevin and then to, to, to ask for the procedure. But I will send all the materials to you if you want to do that. Okay, another tricky one will be the Zhang Yard. Junk yard means the dumping site. Okay, uh, here will be also a very important information every realtor you should memorize. So what was the old dumping site here on Guam? What is the old one? All dot, all dot dump, okay? So what is the current one? That's the future one, right? What is the current one? What is it? The orders, the, but they are not using it no more. They 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 sealed it. What where is the new, uh current one? The one knows? in Latin, the Latin place. Uh, right. Okay. And then where is the future one? That will be the the one you need to memorize. Let me bring a map. So that will that will be the information you want if you're selling a land. Right next uh in around that area, that will be the information you need to disclose to your clients. So Pete, where is the new place? Uh, that, that can, can you find it? Can you come here? Oh, no problem. Yeah. Who, who can locate it? Can, can, you, can you find it? <laughs> no, I'm just saying that it's around there. <laughs> Uh, so the big area, what is the big area? Talifofo, right? Is it Talifofo? <laughs> Talifofo, yes. It is a place called Dende. Dende. Dende? Yeah, Dende. It is somewhere here. <laughs> it is somewhere here. <laughs> okay, so that will be a homework, okay, everyone? That will be the homework. <laughs> The homework is where where can you find Dende? Yeah, where is the Dende? So that will be the homework, okay? <laughs> homework by Dende, it's called D-A-N-D-A-N. It's a very cute name, Dende. <laughs> okay. So that will be the new dumping site. So after you identify the location, uh, you have to keep in mind because next time, if you are selling a land right next to it, this will be the information you need to disclose to the buyer. Otherwise, you're going to have trouble. Mm, okay, so and then that land 
for sure it has to be a M2. Otherwise, you are not going to build a dumping site on it. Okay, next one, H zone. Uh, Sam, can you go through H zone? Uh, please cam keep your cameras on. Uh, unmute. Hi, hey, yes, hi, sorry, hi. So H zone, resort hotel zone permitted use, uses and permit permitted uses. Number one, cultural and recreational facilities, hotels, restaurants, tourism, related shops and offices, dwellings, parks, marinas, zoos, amusement activities, and supportive services. Number two, permitted accessories, uses, and structures, uses and structures which are customarily accessory and clearly complementary to permitted principal uses and structures shall be permitted. Service stations shall be permitted only within and as accessory to the parking garages containing 250 or more parking spaces. Mm, okay, here's my question. So if I want to build a hotel, what other, other zone? There's one more other zone can be qualified for building a hotel. What is that zone? R2, yes, R2. We can, we can find an R2 to build a hotel. So here's the question. Why should we still need H zone? Yes, for the facilities. So the, remember that R2, you can barely build a hotel like a motel. But if you want to build some facilities, remember here is the hotel resort, like a water park, golf court. Uh, John like playing golf, right? Golf court. And then uh, some like uh, zoos and amusement park, you have to get an hotel uh, H zone, hotel resort zone. You're not able to do all these activities on only R2. So that will be the difference why uh, you need an uh, H zone. Okay, this one, uh, this one is the new one. So um, it's a PF before we did not have these zonings. So let's see why does the government create this zone? Uh, there's a under the table secret over there. Uh, Momo, can you go through this one? Momo, not there. Rani? Yes. Yes. Oh. Hi. Okay. Mm. So public facility zone, the school, police station, fire station, community centers, re recreation centers, senior citizen centers, public health centers, libraries, government building, and other related facilities. Mm, okay. So before we did not have this one, and then why does the government create this zone? What do you think? Yeah, they can build whatever they want. Yeah, they don't, they don't need to uh, apply for the conditional use or permit. I think that's the, the, the real person, uh, the real purpose, right? So, and then, before, if they want to do this, for example, like school, school is a conditional use for, I remember it's uh, R1 or R2. School is the conditional use for R1 or R2. So if the government is planning to build a school, and then the only way is they, they need to apply for conditional use. By establish the PF, so they can skip this process, they can go ahead and to build it. I think that is the main purpose. Yeah, why they establish the new zoning for public, for, for government. Okay, another one will be a special one, uh, school zone. I, I go through this one. Public schools and school related facilities. So we have experienced the problem. So uh, because we are going to relocate our school to Agania. So right next to the Agania post office. And then when we apply for the new business license and then uh, uh, they, they need, we need to provide the zone permit. And then the uh, land management give me a call. Uh, this is the conversation. So uh, first of all, they ask, so what business are we doing? Uh, I'm saying that, oh, we're providing, uh, where the school? So, and then she says, oh, sorry about that. If that's a school, you are not able to do the business on C zone. So I said, but we have been doing this business for 20 years. So she said, because of the new, like a permitted use law, so you are not able to do that. So, and then I said, uh, what should I do? So, and then you're going to screw my business. 
Okay. I did not say that. Okay. But this is my mind. Okay. And she said, oh, uh, there's another way. So you change the, the name instead of you call yourself school, uh, the, the, the business school, you, instead of you saying that you are school. So you can change into a training institute. And then that, that will meet the requirement. As long as you don't call yourself school. So you don't need the school zone. So you can call yourself training institute and then you don't need the school zone. So that will be the, that will be the rule because of the new zone. Uh, and then they have this new rule. Okay, so that will be the, the new zonings. So um, I already sent this material and also the uh, GCA to you, and then you can review on your own. So basically, so this is the new zonings. And you might have a question. There is one missing. What is missing? We have covered all the 10 of the 11, but there's only one missing, limited commercial. Okay. And then here is the, the very tricky one. Even though you read the real estate law, the GCA, you don't find the permitted uses for limited commercial. So that's the tricky one. So limited commercial is really depending on what, how they limit. They can eliminate some, like, uh, some uses. For example, an example is, do you know uh, across from onward, there is uh, the old uh, Salvation Army. The two-story building, okay? Remember that that one is a limited use, uh, the limited commercial use. And then they cannot sell alcohol. And then they cannot do certain activities. They will eliminate those permitted uses from the normal commercial zones. So when you see this LC, when you see the LC, you really need to ask, so what uses have been taken away from the normal commercial zones? So that will be the homework case by case. You have to do your own research. It is not given on the law. So it will be uh, case by case. Okay, next one. Next one, we're going to talk about the setback because setbacks really related to us. Okay, uh, let's uh, give me, uh, let's take a five minute break. So uh, uh, give me some time to pull out the document. Uh, take a five minutes break. Hey, Lay, where did you send this information? Uh, in, the, in the group chat, in the WhatsApp group chat. Ah. And also so the, the virtual student, please type your name in the Zoom group chat. I'm taking attendance. So, and then with the attendance, you can claim your CE hours. If you did not type your name in the Zoom group chat, Zoom group chat, please type your name during the break. Uh, Sam, the Zoom group chat, type it into the Zoom group chat.
Okay, so please come back. Uh, feel free to ask questions. So I want to make it a, a discussion class. So if you have any questions and then feel free. Uh, don't, don't type in the chat because uh, sometimes because I'm, I'm, I'm teaching, so I don't have time to back and forth to see the chat. So if you have questions, just shout out. Shout out. Hey, yes. Hey, you know, for a hotel zone, it really has to go through the process of approval. The board has to meet and discuss it. It's not as simple as the others, All right. like anything, sure. anything in hotels. So I just right. wanted to mention that. Yeah, for sure. Also, the reason why people need uh, the hotel zone is the high restriction. If you want to build more than three story, and then you need to get a, a H zone and then to get approval. That's the reason H zone is so different from the others. Um, okay, so hey, that's, yes, go ahead, running. Good question. Um, I'm kind of dealing with this issue right now, but um, there's a 10 unit complex that I'm working on right now, and it's built in a commercial zone. Um, <clears throat> nowadays, you can't have that. So the problem is, you know, since it's not allowed, <clears throat> back in the day, like 1971, there were no zoning laws so you could pretty much build <coughs> what, excuse me whatever you want um but now if an owner is trying to sell it and transfer ownership you can't really go through a bank the appraisers are saying they can't really appraise it without documentation to prove that it's been grandfathered in mm. land, land management doesn't have recorded docs mm. <coughs> or a variance or anything like that. So in those type of scenarios where there were no zoning laws, mm -hmm. 
what is your advice in regards to like what somebody would do mm. if there's something built that doesn't you know work That's with today's question. Actually, uh, this is not a single case. This is a very common case. So here is um, the, 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 the only way you can do this. First of all, you know we have a very special period. What is the period? That's the Guam's biggest conspiracy. So no one wants to tell you the secret, but since you already paid for me, so I, I'm going to disclose the secret to you. On Guam, in Guam's history, we have a dark period around six years. Who knows? I forgot. 1997. 1991, November to 1997, June. What happened during that period? Right. All the building codes got deleted on purpose by someone. Crazy, right? No building codes. It means that as long as you submit, for example, Ronnie just said, Season, I want to build an apartment building. You'll get approved. And then if you want to build a six stories and then violating the high restriction, you're going to get approved. And then if you want to build a, the building right next to the beach, you're going to get approved. Look at In on the Bay, look at Lupin Cove. They are all violating the current building codes and then they, they got approved. In that case, so the government um, understand that they, they did something wrong during that period. So as long you, as you have some proof to prove that the building was built during that period, you will automatically receive the variance. So Ronnie, so here is the only way to, to ask the owner whether they can provide any document as, as long as that's one piece document, even the picture. So here's the funny thing. Yeah. I got a business license. Uh -huh. how, how is this 10 unit complex operating and has a business license till today? Right, that, that's- So I asked for that. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Because, you know, apparently they're saying all the documents were destroyed in a typhoon, you know, with land management, there's nothing recorded. And, you know, my client will end up rezoning it later on. Mm -hmm. But right now, there's no way to transfer any ownership. So I'm thinking, you know, well, a business license should suffice at least because they're, they've got the government's allowing them to operate as a 10 unit they have tenants in there that they're collecting rent from. So now we're just kind of in this pickle mm. um, because they, they're saying that they need documents. So mm. what, what does that even mean? What mm. other documents do you need if land management doesn't have anything recorded, but clearly this was built in 1971, mm. you know, it, hello, it's already grandfathered because in 1971, there's no zoning laws. So it's kind of really, you know, hard. I've never dealt with a situation like this mm. before. Mm. Um, but the building is old. There was nothing on it. We got it surveyed. We did everything we could. And I'm just kind of stuck because I don't know what else <coughs> we need. Mm. And the bank is requiring it. So it's Very. harder when you're dealing with institutions mm. like a bank who's going to give, you know, part of a loan. Mm. If it was probably all cash, it mm. probably wouldn't be an issue, but I'm still worried for my client because then how's he going to get a business license and stuff in his name? Right. If so we have this problem. The, you know? the explanation is so because the business license is issued by the revenue and taxation, right? For sure. They, they need to check the, the zoning, the zoning permit to issue the, the business uh, license. But mm -hmm. their purpose, the, their main purpose is to collect money. So as sure. long as they think that it is profitable, they might issue the business license. But for the DPW and land management, they want to follow their rules because they think that they are authority, right? So Kevin, do you have any idea? Okay, so <laughs> what was this about? I'm really sorry. Oh, so the uh, Ronnie yeah. got a- uh, Ronnie got a- uh, yeah, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, besides, and about that 1997 period, you know, we Guam homeowners, we have a backyard extension and stuff. So setback uh, boundaries requirement is not met. Then normally you just write, um, take photos and then write a management and submit it to them. Then uh, you pay 
like a $25 fee and then they approve you, right? So then it becomes a bank financeable. But on, on her case, it's, it's been such a long time ago. So I think you have to go to land management and then sit down with the official there. Then they will pro probably guide you through and yeah. find a solution for you. Otherwise it doesn't make sense, right? <laughs> They are, yeah. I think land management is reasonable and they're trying to help you when you go there. Mm. Okay, so yeah. let's just uh, keep us updates, Ronnie. So because uh, yeah, the, we are real the agent has already gone there to land management and has, has had no luck. So I, I will keep you posted on mm. how this ends up playing right. out. Uh, because every, every day, so as a realtor, we're going to have surprise. If you don't want to mm. get bored, be a realtor. So that's, uh, that's really true. Uh, this job will never get you make you bored. Uh, okay, so um, next section we're going to go through the setback requirement. Setback requirement also new rules. They updated. They they are not they were uh, they are not using the old requirement. These are all new. Um, but just like I said, we're not going to cover this totally. This material is 100, 109 pages. So we're not going to cover all of these. Most of them are new. So it was updated in uh, 2020 and May. Uh, we only talk about Article 5 in this class because that will be related to setback requirement. And setback usually will be uh, highly related to our business. And then we'll talk about uh, sub-Article 1. Uh, Article 5 and sub-Article 1. That will be the yard and area, the setback requirement. And then for the remaining... Uh, if you want to know more, so we can provide more courses. Uh, but in this three hour, we'll focus on the <laughs> sub article one. Uh, the four topics in sub article one will be minimum yards and lot areas established, general yard and area requirements, and exceptions to yard and area regulations. And then the last one statement of purpose building and building height restrictions in beach areas. Okay, let's go through. Uh, uh, one, number one, minimum yards and lot area established. I will ask some students go through this and then uh, we're going to summarize what does each section mean. Uh, let's see the first one. Uh, Jalika, can you go through the one I highlighted? Sure. A minimum yards and lot areas established. No building or structure shall be erected or maintained, nor shall any existing building or structure be altered enlarged, moved, or maintained on any lot unless a front yard, a, year, a rear yard, and two side yards are provided and maintained on such lot. One, the depth of such front and rear yards and the width of such side yards shall not be less than the depth and width specified in the following yards and lot area table. Further, no lot width or lot area, nor any lot area per dwelling shall be less than the specified in B table. Three, a commercial building to occupy the whole width of a lot must be four, four hour fire res resistive construction. Okay, thanks so much. So here is mentioned the table. Okay, so let's see the table. Uh, if you see the bottom on the left, bottom left, you can see here, it was updated in 2020, May 8th. So it will be the new information. Uh, will be completely, not completely, maybe highly different from the original one. So you stick with this one. This is the new rules and laws. You don't need to go back to the original one. Okay, let's go through four, five, six. Uh, if you have some questions, please feel free to ask. I'm, I'm going to highlight those, uh, those parts I, I think are important. But if you have some question, please feel free to ask. Uh, next one, um, Lazelle, can you go through this one? The, if party walls are to be erected, the written consent of the owners of adjacent lots must be obtained as a prerequisite for the issuance of a building permit to start construction. Five, if the building to be erected is not a fireproof construction, the side yards of eight feet must be provided. Six, in the rural A zone, all structures shall have a front yard of 15 feet, a rear yard of 10 feet, and side yards of eight feet. Mm, okay, so here you mentioned that even though if you have a C zone, 
And then if this is not a waterproof construction, you have to have the uh, side setback. Unless you, if, if you have the waterproof construction, there is no setback requirement for season, for, for commercial use, for commercial use. And then number six is talking about the A zone because that will be the most common one. So here in this law is specified the A zones requirement. That will be the front 15 and rear 10, and then two sides are eight. So a lot of students might ask, how do we define front and rear? How do we define front and rear? How do you answer that question? What, what for a lot, what is the front? What is the rear? Where is the front door? Where is the entrance, the road? The road would define where is the front. Yeah, the, the, road. the road determines where the front of the house is. Right, correct, the, the road. And that, that also indicates your address. Right, correct. And then some students are asked to follow, they are very smart. After I explain this, the, the road, the access, the road define where is the front. And then they ask the follow question. That student very smart. What if there's a corner lot, corner lot? Mm. How do you answer this question? If there's a corner lot, corner lot have two <laughs> roads. It's where your front door faces. If mm. your front door faces the, the loop or the cul-de-sac, mm. then uh -huh. that'll be your address. If it's pointed towards the uh, main road, uh -huh. then that'll be the, mm. the address. Okay, yes. That, uh -huh. will, that, that will be the normal answer. But for if you're asking an engineer to design, so here will be the answer. So you have two fronts. You have two fronts. So the two fronts need to following the, the 10 feet, the two fronts. You have two fronts. You have two fronts. Okay, so that will be the, that will be the answer for the engineer. Yeah, you have two fronts. Uh, okay, so that will be the A zone. Um, letter A, B, and C. This one is very interesting, A, B, and C. I'm going to share you a secret. Uh, let's see. Uh, Fred, can you go through the one I highlighted? The width of each lot shall be no less than 50 feet with an area equal to or greater than 10,000 square feet, provided that no lot shall have a length to width relationship that exceeds a three to one ratio. Mm, go ahead. B and C. The lot area per, per dwelling unit in the rural zone A shall not be less than 19,000 200 feet, uh, square feet without sewer connection, only if located on top of the northern aquifer. And then letter C, the lot area per dwelling unit in the rural zone A shall not have less than 1,006, or excuse me, 9,600 square feet with sewer connection if located on top of the northern aquifer. Mm, okay, so what does letter A mean? So like say, letter A means if you have a 10,000 square feet A zone. So the front yard, the front, uh, the width of the front cannot be less than 50 feet. So that would be the requirement, at least 50 feet. So if you, the land is bigger than 10,000 square feet. Number two, number two is so interesting. It is called the Northern Aquifer. Uh, when we see the, later on, I'm showing the table, the minimum size, if you want to build a building is 5,000 square feet. But if this, uh, we'll, uh, we'll come back here, we'll come back here. And then after I'm showing the list. Okay, let's see the list. Uh, I'm going to explain later the question after I'm showing you the list and then you have the better understanding. So this is the new table. This is the new table. Do you remember the old version? What is the old version? What was the old version? The old version is not indicated. Hey. Right. 
Anyone remember what is the old version? Old version here, you can compare. You can, you can take out the old version if you have the record. The old version is not indicated single family, multiple family, commercial, land industrial, heavy industrial. It will be A zone, R1, R2, M1, M2, and C. It is not defined by the uses, but defined by the zones. Did I make myself clear? So yes. why do you think the new version changed that? It is not following the zone, it's following the uses. Why? Which one make more sense? The new one. The new one makes more sense. Why? Can you give me an example? Because I think that it, you know, like, um, like, on, like you were saying, like the single family, multifamily, um, that one, like, you know, kind of like specify what, what type of, like, what type of, um, uses. I don't know, I'm just, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. easier to understand because it tells you single family, multifamily, commercial. Correct. Think about this question. Here, go back to the zonings. Can I build a single family home on C zone? Yes or no? Yes. yes. So if yes. I decide to build a single family home on C zone, am I following C zone's requirement or I'm following the single family home requirement? Single family home requirement. Did I make myself clear? Yes. So if yeah. we are following the original zoning requirement, C zone is the front, no setback, and two sides, no setback. That's according to C zone. Anything, if you want to build it on the C zone, you're following that requirement. That does not make sense. If I want to build a single family home on C zone, so no front and then no, no size, that, that's not reasonable. Therefore, they update it into this version and then right now it is more reasonable. It, it, it depending on what type of property. So you are going to construct, not depending on the specific zone because C zone can, you can build multiple different types of purposes. So, and then as long as you stick with the purpose and then you're following the zoning requirements for the purpose, not basically the zone. Can I make myself clear? That's the yes. new version, keep in mind. Okay, so let's go through the new requirement. Uh, if you want to build a single family home, the front yard, the front setback, 15. So, which means that if this is a um, corner lot, so both parts, 15, 15. So both can be considered your front. So for safety reason, the engineer will following this rule. So both can be considered your front, yes. Yeah, you have two fronts. Well, that's uh, that's a good question. Uh huh. So and then the both will be the backs in in that case. Both will be the back. Mm. Right, correct. Both will be the ten feet. Ten feet. That's a good question. See, Sheila is uh, also very smart. Sheila asked a follow up question. Just like the students, students that if we have two fronts, the answer is I I, I asked some some uh, engineer for for that answer. The engineer said if you ask me to design the building on it, so both parts I would consider as front. In that case, both parts, both the, the remaining will be considered as the rear. So 10, 10, 10, 10, and 15, 15. Okay, so um, the front require 15, 15. And then the rear 10 and two sides, eight feet. And lot width, we mentioned, if your lot is greater than 10,000 square feet, so at least 15 feet as the width. And then the lot area, 5,000 square feet, and then lot per dwelling unit. What does that mean? This one is the tricky one. For example, uh, I used to work as a surveyor but for the short term, I cannot stand uh, outside exposed under the sun, so I quit. So, but, as a, but if you want to ask a surveyor to subdivide your land, okay, so for example, you have an A zone, your A zone is uh, 10 acres. So how many, how many lands do you think you can subdivide into? Two. 
if you have 10 acres, let's say 20,000, let's say 20,000 square feet. If you have 20,000 square feet A zone, and how many land, how many pieces, parcels can you subdivide into? You must think 20,000 divided by 5,000, right? That's a wrong answer. No, it's, it's probably three because you got to provide for easement and you got to oh. provide for access. Okay, that's also a wrong answer. <laughs> so this is a tricky question. The answer is as many as you want. If you, as long as you pay, you can even build a heart shape. You can ask, oh, I want to, <laughs> I want to send, my, uh, send my wife a, 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 a romantic gift. I want to subdivide my land into a heart shape. So from the satellite, my wife can also see my love. It is a heart. We can do that as long as you pay. But the point is, if you do that, you are not going to build any construction on it. The last number, $5,000, means if you want to build some construction, the welding on it, so you have to follow this minimum size. Do I make myself clear? If you don't want to do anything, so you can build a heart to represent your love. Right, divided by four. Now of course, just like a, a Fred said, uh, you have to have some uh, the easement and then uh, it, won't be uh, it won't be four for sure. It will be less than four you, because you also need to uh, make, make sure that uh, the assets. The okay, so that will be mean 5,000 5, square feet if you want to build a construction on it. And the other multifamily commercial, light industrial and heavy industrial, you're following the relative number. But here we go back to B. We go back to B. Right now you understand, if you want to build a construction on A zone, the minimum size will be 5,000 square feet. But what does B mean? The lot area per dwelling unit in the rural zone shall not be less than 19,200 square feet. 200 square feet without sewer connection only if located on the top of Northern Aquifer. What is Northern Aquifer? Yeah, that is very critical on Guam. Right now, I'm going to show you the map. This is the secret. No one wants to show you. And then if you want to ask where is North, North Aquifer, and then the surveyor will charge you. I, I used to work with them. I know the under the table secret. They won't tell you. So since you are my best students, right? So I'm going to show you the secret. So what the, where the hell is North Africa? Okay, who knows? Who knows? It's around um, the Northern part of Guam and the, like the uh, border is somewhere around Chalampago or dot area. Oh, somewhere around. <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know exactly. I just know that. <laughs> okay. So right now, let me show you the secret. Okay. Thank the you. The secret is Route 4. Where is Route 4? Route 4, Agania. This is Route 4. The, the Agania um, Bank of Guam. Bank of Guam, Agania. When you get in, that's Route 4. Route 4. I'm not sure whether the camera can catch. So if you have your cam, uh, you have your map, you can, you can follow me. So go into the Route 4, and then Route 4 actually cut the entire Guam into the northern part and southern part. And then anything above Route 4 will be considered it's on the North Aquifer. And then if you want to subdivide, 5,000 is not the smallest requirement. It will be double. It will be double. That, that is the double, 19,200 square feet. I did not know that. Yes. 19,200. So that will be the, the minimum size. For example, that usually happens if you have a land in Chigo and then you're not able to follow $5,000. It require more. Not because of land management. Here is, the, ooh, here is the answer. Not because of land management does not want you to subdivide into two because of which entity, which agency? EPA. Um, EPA. EPA. And here is some further knowledge since you are the Guamanian. So I think you should know this. Why not? Why can't 
we subdivide into smaller pieces. What is the fundamental reason why we cannot? To protect sure. the northern aquifer, because um, as long as there is no sewer there, then I think this this applies. But Guam Guam has a very high percolation rate, hmm. so by the time like the rainwater hits the ground and it enters the northern aquifer, it's hmm. very very fast. Right, and so right. they just want to protect the aquifer, make sure it's not contaminated right. by, Correct. you know, like yeah, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, that's absolutely right. So I really don't want to say this because after I disclose the truth to you, no one can eat today <laughs> because you know what? So every day, but I still want to tell you, even though this information will disgust you for at least a couple of months, you know what? So every day we're drinking the water, right? The water mm -hmm. is from the, the aquifer, the underground water. So what is septic tank? What does septic tank mean? Where is the poo and pee go? In the septic. They, right, they don't go away. They will go down to the underground water. So actually people, my fellow citizens of Guam, every day we are drinking pee and poo. That's the reality. We have to oh, accept gosh. that. Oh, delicious. <laughs> yeah, delicious. That is the reason. <laughs> That is the reason why if you don't have public sewage and then everything on the North aquifer, you are not able to subdivide into smaller pieces. The government have to control the pee and poo in the drinking water. Okay, so what are you going to have for lunch? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Okay, so uh, letter C is telling us the lot area per dwelling unit in the rural zone shall not be less than 9,600 square feet with sewer connection if it is on the north aquifer. Okay, so that will be the requirement. If it is above Route 4, you are not following this table, you're following B and C. Okay, that will be the information you share to your clients. Because some buyers say, oh, I want to buy a land and subdivide into pieces and sell them separately and earn money. And then you should, you should tell them this information. And then otherwise they are going to waste their money. Okay, so you can see the, uh, here is there is a mark telling you for properties not located on top of North Aquifer. Okay, let us see. Lot over the aquifer, lot sizes and setback on properties above the aquifer shall be established by Guam Environmental Protection Agency. So actually, who is the boss? I, I don't think land management is the boss, to be honest. If you are the uh, developer, actually EPA will be the king to make the final decision. So most of the cases will be land management will prove. Yeah. Yes. North aquifer, yes. Uh huh. Wow, you want me to disclose the under the table secret to you? <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I'm hesitate to disclose this. Do you really want to know the under the table secret? So I'm disclosing too much to you so today. <laughs> and then especially, okay, so I'm going to disclose this secret to you because you are my best students. Here is the secret. There is a under the table secret law is called parental subdivision. Mm. Parental subdivision is really the loophole on Guam. So I have written a report because I, I took some courses uh, at GCC for my surveying degree. And then my instructor is the chief surveyor on Guam. So we had a discussion for the project. I submit a proposal to eliminate the parental subdivision law and they are considering it. So ladies and gentlemen, if you want to take the loophole, so this is the last chance because I know they are considering to eliminate it because parental subdivision can be exempted for all the requirements. Oh, I think it's also intended if you're not uh, doing it for intended use. Right, yeah, mm. so. so can be exempted all the requirements. All the subdivision laws or requirements can be exempted for 
the parental subdivision. And then there are some super loopholes. If you're interested, I can, I can prepare another class for parental subdivision. Yes, and give me some time. And then I'm going to yeah. disclose more secrets to you about the parental <laughs> subdivision. The historical loophole here on Guam, if you want to be rich, so this is the place you can take advantage from. Okay, so let's move on. Number two, general yard and area requirement. And A, B, and C. Um, let's see. Um, Who didn't read? Terry, can you go through A, B, and C? General yard and area requirements. A, no required yard or other open space provided about any building or structure for the purchase of complying with provisions of this title shall be considered as providing a yard or open space for any other building or structure. B, no lot or parcel of land under separate ownership at this time, at the time this law became effective, shall be separated in ownership or reduced in size below the minimum lot width or lot area set forth in the yards and lot area table. C, where a lot in the R1 zone has an area of 10,000 square feet or more, a one family dwelling may be erected, maintained on each 5,000 square feet thereof, if front, side, and rear yards of the depth and width specified in the yard and lot area table are provided and maintained for each such dwelling. Mm, okay, so basically ABC is telling us uh, if there's no uh, other reasons or excuses, you have to follow the original table. That basically is telling us that. <laughs> and then letter D, uh, Lydian, letter D. Uh, there is no mm, sound. Maybe you need to. Uh, that you you are you are you are fine. But okay, no, sorry. On. In the C and the M one zones, every building hereafter erected in a lot which beats a primary or secondary highway, as shown in a highway plan adopted by the commission or a legislature, shall provide and maintain a front or side yard having a depth or width as the case may be of not less than that required to conform to the lines of such highway. Hmm. It means that if there's a highway next to C or M1 zone, you have to follow some other requirement. Okay, E and F, E and F. Uh, let's see, Ronnie, E and F. B, sorry, I couldn't hear you. What's that? Uh, e and F. E and F. A hotel or motel, while considered a multifamily use, requires a minimum of 400 square feet of lot area per living unit in a commercial zone. A cluster development may have a reduction of yards and lot with upon approval by the commission. Mm, okay, so here will be some additional requirement. And then uh, you can go through them uh, when you have this uh, if this uh, case is for for a new, uh, next one number three will be exceptions to yard and area regulations. Let's see what will be the exceptions are. Uh, a, B, and C. Uh, Jalika, A, B, and C. A no front yard need be provided on a lot in a hillside area. Well, the, where the topography of the lot is such as to make it unreasonable or impractical to locate a building on the lot and provide a front yard. B, no side yard need be provided for a dwelling or hotel erected above the ground floor of a building where the ground floor is designed or designated, sorry, for commercial or industrial purposes. C, Cornice, cornices, eaves, belt courses, sills, canopies, or other similar architectural features may project into a required side yard, not more than two inches for each one foot of width of such side yard and may project 
into any other required yard space, not more than 30 inches. Mm, okay, so here exception, one is a very typical exception is if the building, uh, there is a huge site, like there's a cliff, and then the only remaining area, you can build a hotel, uh, you can build a property on it, uh, construction on it. So it can be exempted from the requirement. That is the reason clear next, last time you said, why do we need a slope certificate, right? So slope certificate can indicate, slope certificate means that a to topo, a topo map is telling you whether this is a cliff site. If there's a cliff site and then it is, it is impossible to build some construction on it, and then you're going to have the exception. And then maybe you don't need to follow the requirement. So, and then that time you need a, a topo map and slope certificate to, to telling you to explain to the land management whether it is really a steep slope, you are not able to build anything. Okay, D, E, and F. Joanne? D, open, unenclosed, you said D, E, and F, right? Yes, correct. Okay, D, open, unenclosed stairways or balconies not covered by a roof or canopy may project into a required rear yard not more than four, four feet, and such balconies may project into a required front yard not more than six feet. E, open, unenclosed porches, platform, places, not covered by a roof or canopy or landings, which do not extend above the level of the first floor of the building, may project into any required front, side, or rear yard, not more than six feet. F, a fence, lattice, work screen, wall, or hedge, not more than six feet in height, may be located in any required front, side, or rear yard. Mm, okay, so these will be, let's see the others. I will read the G and H. In computing the lot area of a lot which abuts upon an alley, one half the width of such alley may be assumed to be a portion of the lot. H, accessory buildings or structure may be located and maintained in the rear yard except in the required 10 foot rear yard, which is that portion adjacent the rearmost main building on the lot. Okay, so these, these from one and two, so I will leave you uh, as the homework for reading because as a realtor, we don't really need to know too much details. This will be for the engineers, right? Yeah. So I leave you as the reference for you. And then we'll go down to number four. High restriction and beach areas. This will be also, uh, that will be also the reasons. So for a transaction, if you're not following the, um, the beach setback or high restriction, uh, you might have a problem to get the variance or sell the properties. Okay, let's go through uh, A. Uh, Momo, can you go through A? The register finds that indiscriminate building of structure on the beaches of the territory of a Guam creates a menace of well-being of the people of the territory by increasing the pollution of tidal waters that such construction in addition deprives the people of Guam of their rights to the untrammeled use of a beach areas beyond the high water mark. And finally, that such construction destroy the natural beauty of Guam beaches, one of the territory's greatest natural resources. Accordingly, it is the purpose of the restriction here and after contained to protect the beaches of Guam for future generations to elevate all elevate the health problem caused by construction near tidal areas and to make certain the people of Guam remain free to use the beaches of the territory to the maximum extent, not incompatible with the private ownership of the land adjoining said beaches. Mm, okay, so this is the reason uh, why the government of Guam need to set uh, 
beach setback requirement. I'm going to draw the setback requirement for B. B is a long paragraph, but I'm going to draw it out to help you understand what is the setback requirement. Uh, first of all, there's a term is called, this is line is called mean average, uh, mean high watermark. Let me highlight this term. Mean high watermark. What does mean high watermark mean? It means that every, uh, either EPA or some agency, they're going to measure during the high tide and then where is the closest the water can touch. So, and then they're going to make the line. So this is the mean uh, high, how do you call it? Mean high water mark. Based on this mark, if you, if you want to build some construction closer to the beach, so this will be the requirement. 35 feet. My iPad is not working this morning, so I'm going to draw here. 35 feet away. So for example, this is the building you have to draw here. You have to build the building here, 35 feet away from the mean high water mark. So if your construction is higher than 20 feet, the 35 feet need to be extended to 75 feet. 75. 75, if the construction is taller than 20 feet, that's the requirement. But if you drive around the Guam, there are a lot of buildings violating this requirement. A very significant case will be Inn on the Bay. Have you been to the Inn on the Bay? Do you know where is it? Inn on the Bay, Agate, Agate, right? If you've been there, you feel very interesting. The water can already touch the building, the balcony, if you have been there. The, the, the ocean, the ocean water can, can touch the balcony. So it's just on the beach. It's not even 35 feet, maybe less than one feet. It's touching it. Why? Why do you think the government will prove this? What is the first question you should ask? When was it built? When was when it, built? Was it? <laughs> it was built between the evil period, window period. Okay, that is the reason. Okay, that's the beach setback. Okay, and then that will be all for the article one. And then that's all uh, of the information to be covered for this class. Any questions? Hmm, no questions? Oh, I got a question. Yeah, Pete. Um, since we talked about the new table. Shout. Since, since we talked about the new table, right? Uh, uh -huh. I remember I took the class and we went over the uh -huh. previous table. Uh -huh. right? Since I'm going to be taking the exam, uh -huh. are they going to be using the You are right. The they, one, they right? use the old one. They uh, the old exam, one. yeah. If you're taking the broker's exam, and then the, uh, Chris Murphy did not update the information yet. So uh, they still use the old table. Mm. Okay. Mm. Right. okay, for the students, uh, if you uh, here, here, here is the announcement. So if you did not type your name, so please don't forget to type your name in the Zoom group chat. And then for, if you are the uh, nice member and then you have the privilege to take this class and then you don't need to pay right now. You only need to pay when you request the certificates. But here, please do me a favor because we are nice is very broke. So we are not as rich as Gar. So I'm only by myself. So your own records, I have your name here, but don't ask me the question, how many courses I have taken with you. So keep your own record. I can verify with you, but we don't have the manpower to, uh, <clears throat> to like the pull out all together. You keep your list. And then if, when you request your certificates, I can verify with you. Okay, please do me a favor. We are very broke. Thank you for your support. Uh, Lei? Yes. Lei? Yes. Um, okay, I just have a comment about the hmm. mean high water mark yes. is that I recently had a, a case hmm. a while ago, a long time ago, where um, my client purchased a building in Hagatnya <clears throat> and wanted to renovate the building. But the building was an old, old building. And so in order to renovate, they had to, we had to make sure that the building was above, because it's not just the distance from the beach, but it's also the height of the building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so we had to get it surveyed and make sure that the building was above that, um, the mean high water mark. If it was below that mean high water mark, there was nothing we could do with the building. We couldn't renovate. 
Right. And so fortunately it came back, it was like one inch above that mean high watermark. And so we were able to, you know, to completely overhaul and renovate that whole entire building. But that's kind of like a case, like if you look at um, Joyce Tang's building in Hagatnya, mm -hmm. okay, if you see that that's built on stilts, if you drive by there, you're going to see it's built on stilts because when they built that building, they couldn't go below that high watermark and they therefore had to build it on stilts. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to point that out. Right, yeah. So if you want to... Uh, reconstruct, and then you have to follow the new building codes. Otherwise, they are not going to get approved from the DPW. Okay, thank you for the sharing. Any other comments, questions? No? Okay, so that will be everything for this class. Uh, thank you for your participating, and please keep supporting us. And then uh, every Friday morning, 9 a.m., so we'll have the, the class. So, so stay tuned in the uh, group chat and then if you are also if you have some interesting topic uh, like I, I right now I have an idea I know that you 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 like taking the loophole like a parental subdivision right okay so I'm going to prepare a class to explain uh, the normal subdivision and parental subdivision and then can help you uh, to take advantage of it maybe you can become a millionaire don't forget to buy me a coffee when you're getting rich okay that's everything for today <laughs> I'll see you next time Mm. Bye, Joanne. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Lee. Bye, 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 Lee. Bye, Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye, Lee. Bye, everyone. Get vaccinated. Bye. Yes, go ahead. Mm -hmm. A separate, separate kitchen. Uh, you asked the contractor. We have a contractor here. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know who I called? I called Marigou a lot. Oh, yeah. Marigou, yeah, yeah. Marigou. So what do you do? Yeah, contractor. Here's. It's already built, though. Mm. Is that okay? So, uh, house, right? Yeah. Yeah, Thank you, Lei. Thank you. Bye, Lei.